Hello and welcome to In The Loop Wollongong. I'm Nathan. And I'm Natasha and we have an excellent show for you this month. We sure do. <laughs> Make sure you stay in the loop with us by subscribing on YouTube. And don't forget, if you want a sneak peek of what is coming up each month, Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Coming up later, Justin and the I-98 FM Street Fleet will be playing virtual golf at Party Golf in Albion Park. Diggy's head chef Johnny is in the kitchen with I-98 FM's Christy Hayes. Bright Mind Professor Pascal Perez from UIW's Smart Infrastructure Facility will be telling us all about their new digital living lab. The Illawarra Mercury's Greg Ellis will be sitting down with Professor Julie Steele to talk about her incredible career in biomechanics. And we'll catch up with iTree CEO Ben Hobby to talk innovation. And now we once again send Justin and the i98 FM Street Fleet to play a sport that resembles golf. This time it's party golf at Albion Park. Party. I see what you did there. <laughs> this segment is brought to you by Destination Wollongong and Internetrics. Hey there, it's Justin from i98FM and today we have brought some of the street fleet down to party golf in Albion Park Rail for a game of virtual golf. Now, my entire golfing career has worked up to this very moment, so I can tell you now, I'm going to win. Okay, welcome guys to a bit of virtual golf. So today we've chosen to play Pebble Beach uh, Golf Links uh, in the States, where they play a lot of the professional golf events. Uh, so we're ready to tee off. It's pretty simple. It's exactly like real life golf. We'll be teeing off with the driver and we'll pretty much uh, set up normally like you're out on the course. And we're going to try and uh, drive the ball right down the middle on the fairway. And then if you hang on to the club, I'll take you through what a full swing will feel like. Okay. Just keep your eyes on that rubber tee. Yep. So we're just going to swing back. Whoa. And as you swing down, hitting the golf ball, following through. I've never played golf or virtual golf. I've only played Wii Golf, so I'm not going to go well. My main competition is Hannah. She's been trash talking all day and I'm going to beat her. Well, I've played a bit of putt-putt in my time, so I think I'm going to do pretty good. I'm looking to beat everybody. Um, it's just the way I am. I, I absolutely don't like losing. I don't plan on losing. And if I do, you'll probably see a grown man cry. Whoa! Whoa. Whatever. Ah! Oh. All right, Hannah. You're up again. How come I'm up again? Because you hit it like four metres. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll give you that. Terrible start to the game, but it's still early. I, I can win this. I'm pretty, still pretty confident. Honestly, I think I came second. If Cameron hadn't have won and I went next, I was 48 centimetres out of a double bogey. So that's really good for me. <laughs> what is this? Oh! oh. oh. That's your match? Go in, go in, go in! Oh. I think I'm going to try and psych out the competition. I don't think my skills are going to improve, so I think I just need to ruin theirs, to be honest. <laughs> oh, get in the hole! Oh, yeah! Well done. Cam thinks he's Hercules when he takes a strike. It doesn't matter where he's on the green or he's teeing off. Either way, he still hits it hard. Ebony, I don't know what she's doing. Apparently, it goes straight, but it really only goes a few metres. But And Hannah, well, she just panics every time she gets up there. So as far as I'm concerned, no competition. Watch this last hole. I'm bringing it home. <laughs> <laughs> Too strong for golf. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Should be doing wood chopping. <laughs> See? Guns of steel. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Seriously? So Ebony and I are all tied up and we're about to have a putt off and I'm going to win. No way. I'm going to win. Oh, too much. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Look, we've wrapped up our awesome game of virtual golf and look, I have to concede that I don't know how, nobody knows how, in fact it will never ever be discovered the reason, but Ebony managed to win with her miracle swings and her perfect straight <laughs> balance, but who knows. Anyway, it was a lot of fun and if you are looking to have a lot of fun and escape the winter elements and still have a round of golf, come on down to Party Virtual Golf in Albion Park Rail, a heap of fun, you can check them out online, partyvirtualgolf.com.au. 
Have you ever played golf, virtual or otherwise? I have actually. I've been to this one at Bogey on Down of one Friday night with all my friends. Oh, does that mean you were good? No, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Terrible. If you want to play Party Golf, we are actually giving away a $100 voucher. To win, all you have to do is share the episode or segment and tag in the comments who you'll be tagging to get your virtual hole-in-one on. Hi, I'm Christy Hayes from i98FM and here we are in the kitchen with Chef Johnny from Diggies. Hi, Johnny. How are Hello. you? I'm good. Okay, good. so what are we cooking? Uh, we're going to do a bit of a Diggies staple. Yep. Um, Classic eggs benedict. Sweet. So. Okay, I can't cook whatsoever. That's no. not really a problem, is it? Nah, sure. Not really. Fine. We'll see. We'll see how we go. All right, let's go. I'm hungry. Can't All wait. Right. Cool. Eggs benedict. Happy days. Happy it's days. One of indeed. our biggest sellers down there. Yeah. So tell me a bit about Diggies. Where where are you located for people that um, might not have been? Well, pretty much right on the beach. Um, Diggies is a institution of Wollongong, basically. Yep. You know what I mean? Whether you're out of town, locals, like really big following. Um, I've been going there for years and years before I was ever a chef. So um, really, you should have been if you haven't everybody, already. Everybody, yeah, if you don't know what to get, you're probably <laughs> yeah. living they under They don't want to come in. So, <laughs> yeah. um, first off, we're just going to separate some eggs. Mm -hmm. Great. Because we need the yolks to make our hollandaise. Mm -hmm. So the base of a hollandaise is simple. It's just an acid. It can be lemon. You can use vinegar, white wine. Depends on your flavour. You can add things into it. But mm -hmm. we're just going to do the really basic mm -hmm. um, base sauce, essentially. Yeah. This you also turns into bernays for steaks. Oh, yeah, does it? There we go. Yeah. Fun fact. So. Sure. All right, so now that's, what we're basically doing here is the sabion essentially. So you want to slowly cook your eggs through, mm -hmm. but you don't want to scramble them. Um, and as you can see here, it's a little bit fluffier. That's the base of your sauce set. Or it kind of looks a bit like hollandaise. Mm -hmm. Can I do anything? Anything um, at all? Can you crack eggs into water? I can crack eggs <laughs> into water, yeah. All right, so. This is pretty easy. So. I could make eggs benedict from scratch. Yeah. Cooking's not supposed to be complicated. I think too many people overthink it. Sure. And that scares them. What made you want to get into cooking? Into being a chef? Yeah. Uh, my nan was an absolutely terrible cook. So oh. I wanted to, and I always kind of liked food, and I always wanted to teach myself to be able to have a skill that she can't. Sure. I got really sick of microwave bacon. Yeah. And yeah. Great. Now what are we doing? Gigs? And also I just wanted to impress chicks. That's the other thing. Well, hey, so. it's working. I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to be down diggies now. <laughs> So then we're just adding the, this is ghee, clarified butter. Great. And that's what gives your sauce that richness. Sure. Are you licensed, by the way? Uh, yes, yes yeah, we are. Good. So you I can come good. in for those people that, you know, Important for the, questions, for I the know. morning after or whatever, you can, from 8 o'clock in the morning, uh -huh. where we're licensed from. So Great. So we're open 6.30 every day. Uh -huh. So for whether it be a hangover or you just want a nice wine on a sunny day, it's up to Perfect. you. Perfect. See, I love wine. Wine yeah. is one of my passions in life. All right. So after all that whisking, your hollandaise is basically done. Fabulous. Just, uh, Give it a nice glossy and smooth thing. You just add a little bit of your vinegar water there you use for your poaching. Uh -huh. That helps stabilise it. Yep. For us for service, you know, you've got to keep it for a little while, otherwise it'll split. Sure. Looking good. You work quite quickly, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out of here. <laughs> so, with poached eggs, you're looking at about two and a half minutes, uh -huh. and that'll give you that nice soft runny centre. That will break open. Wow, they look delicious. Look at that. Hey, Chef Johnny, tell yes. me a little bit about, you guys are really involved in the community at Diggies. Yeah. You do things, you know, with all the local community. The cyclists love you guys, right? Yeah, they do. Well, you're riding by the beach, you might as well stop in and have a coffee. Yeah. Eggs Benedict, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So, and skydive cool. the beach as well? Yep. Um, all the local fitness groups, Savvy. Um, we actually have a dish, Savvy Breakfast, so specialised for them. Sure. Spinach, all your healthy stuff that people enjoy to eat. Uh-huh. And yeah. So, so you make great food, you do great things for the community, and you're licensed. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're just going to toast the bread. I just put a little bit, bit of ghee in there. Mind uh, your way, do you want me to move? Oh, you're right. That's right. Just nice and healthy. Yep. Nothing like clarified butter. <laughs> As you can see, we don't have a toaster, so you can just do it in your pan. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Might turn the heat down a little bit. So if you want to just keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Just By keep an eye on it, just make sure it doesn't burn. burn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> all right, putting it out yeah. there, okay. So try not to burn the toast. Sure. Easily done. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then once that's ready, we're pretty much good to go. Great, okay. So we've got ham here that we get from the local butcher. Mm -hmm. We use Hasties there in Wollongong. Good people. Mm -hmm. um, another family. And then we just got some spinach there. Gives it a little bit of green. Yep. Everyone likes spinach. Healthy. Healthy? Yep. I feel, I feel healthy just looking at this produce. It's, a, it's right? a really rich butter sauce, you know, so you <laughs> yeah. need to cut it up with that's a That's all right, know, some spinach, it's all yeah, about yeah, balance, yeah, yeah, yes? Yeah, And there's lemon. Lemon's a fruit. So. Yeah. All right, and then we've got toast. Oh, this looks great. Okay, so we'll bring over our ingredients here. Okay. If you want to grab the eggs, sure, sure. that'll be sweet. Dare I say, this looks excellent. Wow, you did. I did. You did. Yeah, I, did. Okay. Right. I couldn't help it. I was trying to think of this great pun. There we go. No worries. 
And now for the magic. So mm -hmm. just build up our Benny here, you two digs, our diggies. We have a little bit of spinach there. Yep. And you got a nice leg ham here. Mm -hmm. You can warm it up if you want. We do. I personally, I, I like my ham, just ham. You sure. know what I mean? Yep. So, and your eggs are hot, your sauce is hot. It's all going to be fun. All right. Then we okay. get our nice little poached eggs on top here. <laughs> get rid of any of these bits. Delish. Right. Time for saucing. Mm -hmm. And for me, to be honest, the eggs and everything are just an excuse to eat hollandaise because hollandaise is delicious. So. I love hollandaise. And really? You know what? Like, there's not. It's actually hard to find anyone doing like a nice in-house hollandaise anymore sure. at work. Everyone's sort of opting for packet stuff, and no, you know, no, you want to make it from It's just not the same. Exactly right. You want to go down to Diggies. <laughs> yeah, hollandaise peoples. Yeah. Butter, goodness, breakfast. Johnny, this looks absolutely fabulous. May I? You're welcome. Yes. Begin. There's a certain way that you got to definitely start. Just crack that egg. Crack that egg, alright. Yep. Ooh. Look at this. Excellent. <laughs> mm, didn't that look good? Diggies are kindly giving away brunch for two from their new winter menu with a bottle of Prosecco valued at $150. Wow. Sounds like a pretty good brunch to me. So if you want to win, share the episode or segment and let us know in the comments who you'll be taking with you to Diggies. Now we ask Professor Pascal Perez from the Smart Infrastructure Facility to tell us all about their recently launched Digital Living Lab and how it is going to help turn Wollongong into a smarter city. This segment is made possible by University of Wollongong. I'm Pascal Perez, Professor of uh, Infrastructure Modelling at the University of Wollongong and Director of the Smart Infrastructure Facility within the Faculty of Engineering and Information Science. The Digital Living Lab uh, is a revolution in the making first, but more uh, technically it's two things coming together, a digital lab and a living lab. The digital lab is about technology and uh, many people have heard about the Internet of Things, not many people know what it is about uh, and what it can do. And this is exactly what we want to bring to Wollongong. It's not only the technology, but having everybody in the city, in the region, understanding what it is about. What we want here is for people in the, in the region to understand what it can do for them. So what we want to do in Wollongong and in the region is to bring applications and even build applications with people for people to understand what it is about and how it can maybe change their lives. Uh, we're already discussing with the Wollongong City Council about um, equipping the uh, stormwater network with the smart sensors at key points, the culverts, some of the pipes, uh, some of the open waterways, in order for the uh, managers at council level to have remote access to this data um, uh, in re near real time. So they're going to be better prepared whenever uh, a new flood event happens in the city. So by um, Mid-July, the, the whole network will be uh, deployed uh, around the region, so um, you can build a, a little uh, sensor, so temperature sensor, for example, it doesn't cost much to have a, a sensor, then you have to have the knowledge or you can come to the smart um, uh, IoT hub, which is an open hub where researchers, students, citizens, residents can come and, and ask questions, share technologies, uh, display what they've been doing, and we're happy to help them. And we think this technology for the moment is probably at the top of the game. Uh, and it's more importantly, it suits our narrative for the region. We want something open that people can hook on and, and not just you buy your subscription, like you buy your subscription to a 3G, 4G system. What the Living Lab will become, I hope, in two, three years time, is a place in Australia where Anyone who has an innovation, any manufacturer, um, any investor who wants to trial thing will come here first because this will be the place where they have the technology in place, where they will have the people and, and the researchers to develop things together and more importantly a community or communities who know what it is about and can embrace the technology uh, more quickly than anybody else in Australia. Next up, for people of Wollongong this month, the Illawarra Mercury's Greg Ellis sits down with Professor Julie Steele to talk about her research into biomechanics, including her work on the world's first bionic bra. This segment is brought to you by Access Law Group and the Illawarra Mercury. 
Hi, Greg Atlas from the Illawarra Mercury and today on The People of Wollongong we're talking to Professor Julie Steele from the University of Wollongong. Julie, welcome along today. Hi Greg. Now, uh, I've known you for probably 15 to 20 years. I've been talking to you and doing interviews with you and we've talked and discussed some very interesting things in that time and you're globally recognised for what you do, being the first Australian president of the, I've got to get this right, Biomechanics... It's the International Society of Biomechanics. There we so, go. Yes, I was the first International um, of Society of Biomechanics president, which is the biggest society in the world on musculoskeletal biomechanics. I currently sit on the World Council of Biomechanics, and that is 44 people chosen from around the world in the most diverse application of biomechanics. So we're talking about cellular biomechanics, cardiac biomechanics. So I'm there very much at what they call applied biomechanics, using this physics to understand how the body works. And your whole career then has pretty much been here in Wollongong? I've actually, yeah, so I came in 1983. Um, I was trained originally as a physical education teacher. Um, at that stage, there were very few universities that actually offered an exercise science program. It was called human movement then. And so I came to Wollongong on a one-year contract. I did not think I would stay for more than one year. In fact, most of my friends in Sydney were kept saying, oh, you poor thing, you know, Wollongong, because it didn't have a great reputation. But I absolutely fell in love with the region and also the university. It was small enough to be personal, but big enough to really have things happening. And I've always sworn that I'll leave when I got bored. And this is my 35th year and I'm still waiting to get bored. But what I do now is I am the director of what they call the Biomechanics Research Laboratory. It's a small but very focused productive group that's at the University of Wollongong. I set up in 2006 um, Breast Research Australia, BRA, to really provide a home for the unique research we were doing at the time, which was on breast health biomechanics. And most people at that time thought we weren't really being serious. They would come sit down and go, really, is this an issue? This is a major area of health concern for women. And that if we're going to allow all women, irrespective of breast size, to be active, we need to focus our research in that area. So it's, again, it's within the Biomechanics Research Lab. This is all based at Wollongong, um, but it has a worldwide reputation because of the unique work we do. But when I first interviewed you, you were doing work with paratroopers and um, you're doing work on footwear and things like that. The bras have been a factor all along, but uh, can you just tell me a little bit about the sequence of how things sure. happen? So my original research way back in the 80s was very much on what we call lower limb biomechanics, looking at loading, the forces applied to that limb and how can we either prevent injuries or enhance performance. So this is where the military work came in. And if you think about it, the loads that paratroopers experience um, when they land are horrendous. So we went down to Nowra and over that year they had six various courses and we would run around the drop zone with video cameras filming the paratroopers landing and then trying to work out the technique they used to land and was that associated with injury. And uh, the work you've been doing more recently, I understand, is to design a bra that can adjust for whatever you're doing at the time, whether that be walking or running or playing sport, or is that a fair summation of the bionic bra? Well, I smile because we've actually been working in that area now for nearly two decades. And when I do talk, I mean, wearable technologies is the buzzword now. We started two decades ago exactly that, trying to look at could I somehow merge our biomechanics knowledge with Professor Gordon Wallace's amazing uh, innovative materials to come up with what we call responsive garments. A big problem with sports bras is they're quite tight, they can be uncomfortable. So could I have a bra that while I'm sitting here, I'm lovely and relaxed, all of a sudden I need to run somewhere, I need to catch a bus, someone calls me, I need to run. This bra could detect the amount of your breast movement and how quickly they move and then tighten up in response to when you need it. And again, when you sit down in the bus and you relax, it could... So it's the idea of a responsive garment that really caters for your needs. And just in wrapping up, uh, you provide a lot of opportunities for uh, young people, researchers and that coming through as well. So, and and, and, and to finishing this interview, I just want you to talk about that and also what the future holds for sure. Professor Julie Steele. Look, I suppose I've been blessed that I've had a long career. I've been a researcher, I've, been an, um, I've gone in and been an administrator, I've been a head of school, I've been an associate dean researcher. I decided to step back into my traditional role 
of more the coalface academic because I think one of the biggest joys I get at that university is watching these undergraduate students who then step into a postgraduate or researcher role. So watching what these students can achieve both from an academic point of view, from a research point of view, from a translation into the community. And all these people are working on devices that we hope can enhance the quality of life. Um, and what else could you ask for? So what do I see? Um, it's an interesting question because as I said, I have been at the university for so long. I said I'd leave when I got bored. I can't see that happening in a hurry. Um, I'm trying to take a little bit more time out rather than being a, a most academics work far too hard. Um, I've taken up long distance running, did my first marathon last year. And that in itself so is quite you just run your own bra for that? Interestingly, yeah. what I find is by now immersing myself in, these are ultra marathons, you actually can pick up on some of the issues um, personally. Well, I'm glad you're not bored because um, <laughs> there's some great things happening in Wollongong that you're involved with and you're inspiring a lot of young researchers to come up through the ranks and you're inspiring other women and you're putting uh, Wollongong on the map globally. So uh, thank you very much for what you're doing and Professor Julie Steele, thank you for your time this morning. And thank you, Greg, for your support. And again, I think that's one of the most key important things is to, is to allow this idea of what we do at the university to be exposed, so thank you. Thank you very much. And for our last story this month, we sit down with Ben Hobby from innovative business iTree to talk about their 20 year journey from a small office at UOW to a national provider of software solutions that make the world safer. This segment is made possible by Advantage Wollongong, Lancaster Law and Mediation, and Kazen Business and Financial. I'm Ben Hobby, I'm the CEO of iTree iTree is a company that provides solutions to regulators and so we work in the fields of compliance and enforcement, uh, mostly for government uh, clients. So we have our own suite of products um, which we developed ourselves with developers here based um, wholly in Wollongong. Uh, we don't offshore any of the work that we do, we do all of that ourselves. So we're building and providing systems uh, that help regulators do their job better. So whether that is the systems that sit behind speed cameras or the systems that sit behind uh, what enforcement officers you know, provide or inspections for vessels in maritime are some of the examples of industries that we work in. Yes, iTree has always been based in Wollongong. Uh, it was created here and the founders of the company actually started um, in a little office on the university campus and we've grown and expanded over the last uh, 20 years. We were the second tenant to move in uh, to the innovation campus when it was first installed just over 10 years ago. And we've grown a lot since then. And the advantages of being based here is um, we can pull a lot of the talented students that come out of the university. And we still have a lot of um, our talented staff today that have come from the university from when they've been doing courses, they come to us for some work experience and they find it a great place to work and then they carry on working and then end up being with us for a lot of years. So we're, we're really grateful that you know, Wollongong and the region here has a focus on innovation and as we are expanding and growing as a business, innovation really is the lifeblood um, of our business. We recently just ran our annual Ship It event uh, which is focused on people from within the business thinking up new ideas and bringing them to the forefront. And then we have a big judging day where all the ideas have been brought forward, we see what they've produced, and then we look to take you know, those innovative ideas forward in the business. And from the last Shippet event we just ran, uh, two of the ideas that were presented that came away with the awards are business applications that we're gonna take forward for several of our customers. I'd say the, the business benefits um, of being based in Wollongong would be that we have people that are committed you know, to the region. What I've seen from the people here is a lot of loyalty, you know, both to the local economy, the local region, uh, to innovation, um, and to producing really good quality work. We've had some people that have been with the business for the entire 20 years that we've been operating, and they're still coming to work today motivated and really pleased that they can be working in a technology business that's thriving that's innovative and is really making a difference you know, to the community. In the next 10 years, I think uh, we 
will become one of the best technology and innovation stories um, out of Wollongong. You know, to have been created here and then to grow the business, and we're growing really, really rapidly over the past year, uh, we're looking to continue to expand and to provide the Australian market, the New Zealand market, and then potentially internationally uh, with our solutions in regulation and compliance and enforcement. What we're really focused on is outcomes. And as I mentioned before, our people are really motivated to come to work for somebody that is having a difference in the community. So our real, I guess, thrust is about producing outcomes that make it safer for Australians to live here. Safer communities, we preserve the environment and we protect you know, the communities that we're a part of. And now it's time for us to give out some prizes. Vanessa Brown is the winner of the trail ride at Dark's Forest Riding Ranch. Jess Wilshire is heading south on a burger tour of her own thanks to the Hungry Monkey, the Berry Hotel, Blue Jay Cafe and Alexander's Cafe. It's my type of prize. And Rachel Evans-Hardy and Sarah Christina have each won a $50 voucher to enjoy at His Boy Oroy. And that's all we have for you this month. That's all. If you enjoyed the show, <laughs> let us know by hitting the thumbs up button. And as always, if you want to know more about any of this month's stories, you can find the links in the show notes below. In the Loop Wollongong is possible because of the support of our wonderful partners, including our media partner, I-98 FM. Good at playing golf. Yeah, by the looks of it, <laughs> made possible by partners. Wollongong Central, discover the city. The University of Wollongong, great place to learn. Sure is. Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Destination Wollongong, those people do so much for us. So much. Access Law Group, resolution is our solution. Kazen Business and Financial. Lancaster Law and Mediation. Illawarra Mercury. Internetrix. Relativity. This place right here with all this cool stuff. Woo! Our promotional partners who you can see here. And our kitchen partners. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on In The Loop All Gone. Bye! With a bottle of Prosecco valued at $150. Wow. <laughs> Stop laughing at me! <laughs> Mmm, didn't that look good? <laughs> You'll be taking to get your virtual one in hole, one in hole, hole in one on.